Welcome back to the week 8 of the Analysis Random Walks and Groups course. And uh, in particular, I start the week by the most important theorem of the course, which is combining all the ideas that we've done since the first week, and now we finally get into a statement that kind of connects all these theorems and uh, results that we have seen. And that's called the upper bound lemma. Which is, uh, it's, it sounds a bit like simple, it's like just a lemma, but uh, they usually say that uh, uh, a good lemma is worth a thousand theorems. And uh, in this case I really agree with this statement because it's really like beautiful result. And especially this is now just in the basic case of the uh, cyclic group of P elements, Zp, where the proof is uh, quite straightforward using all the results we have already proven. Uh, but it may, especially in the more general groups, this is really like a, like a deep theorem that allows you to really connect the ideas of, let's say, the representation theory of groups, for example, into this language, the so Fourier analysis and groups into the language, and uh, and that's uh, I really like this uh, statement. And um, uh, le let me just uh, give you the kind of a, like a basic uh, statement, so the like the the way way it's written in the in the course um, uh, in here. So. Um, let me, uh, uh, so the, the basic idea so is we have this the uh, let's uh, take a, so we start from the notion of upper bound bound lemma and uh, uh, let's write the main statement of that uh, that result so um, <clears throat> so we let mu uh, be a, a probability distribution the uh, probability distribution, and here this p is uh, at least two. That's what we uh, we want to do this uh, this whole whole statement inside here, and uh, then the statement is simple: this that for then for any n in n. So once we iterate the convolution and take its distance to the uniform, so this uh, total variation distance to the uniform distribution, then this is at most a half of the square root of t, uh, if you take k in zp, which are not zero, so all the ones that are not zero, and take the Fourier transform of uh, the probability distribution and take it to the power 2n. That's the whole statement. So you just need to, in order to understand whether this converges to uniform distribution, you just need to compute the Fourier transform of the probability distribution, and uh, as we've seen in the previous uh, video, actually, it's quite simple, actually, in many examples that uh, computing the Fourier transform is not too difficult to do. And, and, but also the nice thing about this statement is that you get a quantitative estimate for the distance to the uniform. You not just get an, uh, like a, something that maybe you can apply to something, but you can actually get use the quantitative estimate in this, this type. So that's called the upper bound lemma uh, that we have here. And, uh, so in particular, maybe if I want to like, uh, do this, so in particular, in the uh, language of uh, random walks and groups, if we have that x1, uh, maybe let's, let's take t1, t2, t3, up to tn, are uh, random var variables on zp, such that they are uh, are independent, and identically distributed, Ident identically distributed, uh, with the distribution mu, that means basically that the probability of tj equals t is equal to the mu t for any t in zp. Then if you take the random walk xn, which is just t1 plus t2 plus and so on plus tn, which is a, uh, the random walk walk generated by mu satisfies that the probability of this xn 
let's say, I don't know, like um, being equal to uh, some value, um, well, let's say hitting a point uh, A, so if there's a, there's a set A, satisfied for every A in uh, a subset Z P, um, and for any N in N, the following, that if you take this probability, like hitting a point a, a set A, so that would be like an event that you could ask for the random walk to do, that whether it's like uh, hits a point in the space at the point uh, equal A, then that probability of this event uh, uh, is actually, um, you can, you can take the distance, remember that this is the total variation distance, the, the uniform distribution, because we can take the total variation distance the uniform distribution, and that actually is just the uh, cardinality of A divided by P. So this distance, and the uh, total variation distance, the maximum of these over all the subsets, so in particular this can be bounded now by a half of the square root of the Fourier transform of this. So we can take the K in ZP and um, k not equal to zero, and take the mu k to n. Notice that the upper bound here doesn't depend on a, the, the set a itself, but just depends on the n. So you can actually make this kind of distance like uniform over all the sets a. That's the kind of idea of the total variation distance. It gives you a uniform upper bound for the for, this, uh, for the convergence. So this is a way to compute probabilities just using the Fourier transforms of these uh, statements. So you only use the Fourier transform to compute this probability at the, at the end. So that's all, all you need to do. So for example, uh, e.g., e like just an as an example, so if you take, let's say, a to be, I don't know, uh, 2 um, and 3, and you take mu to be, let's say, a half Dirac 1 plus half Dirac minus 1, uh, uh, let's say take this in, uh, I don't know, Z5, and you, you remember that we computed the Fourier transform of this is cosine 2 pi um, uh, k over 5, <coughs> we already computed the Fourier transform, then, uh, and we have this random walk, then if you have a random walk that is distributed according to mu, then you can actually bound when, when is this, for example, uh, um, equal to uh, 2 or 3. Um, let's say we can take a lower bound. The probability of this is at, uh, at least, um, if you take this um, distance, so we take a 2 over 3, so that's uh, the cardinality of uh, uh, a over 5, uh, minus uh, the statement, so which is the half, and then we take the square root of k in, uh, actually now it's from 1 to 4, uh, 4 because the 0th term is not included, and then you take the cosine 2 pi k over 5 to the power, let's say you take this to the power 2n, and then take the square root out in the front, um, and then this is, the current value is 2, so it's 2 over 5 minus something that actually goes to 0 quite rapidly. So this statement here is as a sum of, a uh, finite sum of functions that actually these 2 pi k over 5 to the power 2n, you can see that actually these functions here, as I had in the previous uh, video, I had this like picture of slides, these are all less than 1 for any k from 1 to uh, uh, and 4, so they are all less than 1. So you can actually see that this whole summation goes to 0 at the uh, uh, exponential rate. So that means that actually the probability that xn is um, gets the value uh, 2 or 3 is almost 2 over 5 from below. So the probability is at least very quickly is the probability that it's like the uniform probability that you would compute. So this is a very quick way to compute the Fourier transforms of um, these kind of events using the upper bound lemma. And the same way like from both you could compute this type of an example using this upper bound lemma. So uh, there's also a generalization of this lemma. You can write this uh, um, and also like a, maybe like a actually, I, I actually call it a lower bound lemma, which is like um, going from below. So for any uh, mu zp to 0, 1, probability distribution, we have that uh, uh, for any n in n, 
that if you take the total variation distance to the, uh, um, to the uniform distribution of the convolution, this is actually compound from below, but something that looks almost the same, so it still has the square root, and now you have 1 over p here, and then the same summation, k in zp, uh, k not equal to 0, and then you have the Fourier transform of k to the power 2 n. So it depends on what group you're uh, considering, uh, you can actually like make it a bit more slow. So somehow the rate can get a slightly slower the more elements you have in the group. Which is kind of makes sense that if you have a, like a larger group it will take longer time for your random walk to like equidistribute around the space. So there will be like longer period like uh, as it grows. So this um, notice that p is the cardinality of zp, the, the size of the group. Um, Depends on the uh, depends on this kind of situation. Uh, the proof of this uh, is actually I haven't written in the notes, but this is like a good exercise to go through. Like how do you prove? And you need, still need to use the same types of fun ideas as for the upper bound lemma to get. But you can see that using the lower bound lemma, you can actually get like a rate of this. You can make that this rate that we obtain here in the upper bound lemma is kind of sharp, except there's like an error coming from the side of the group. So if the group is very large, you might get a bit bad rate. So it's it's in this uh, terms of a small group, you have actually very sharp rates for the for the convergence of these probabilities, uh, what you have here. Uh, so it's a good good uh, good like uh, um, counterpart for the for the other lemma. And then like coming to the previous video when I talked about the examples of different distributions. So if we have uh, mu one, mu two, uh, and mu n. Uh, which are uh, probably uh, probability distributions in Zp, probability distributions. Uh, then we can also talk about uh, this kind of a Tumon convolution, uh, they, their convolutions, mu n, and start at that distance to the uniform. Then this also has an upper bound lemma, actually using the very sim similar kind of methods, and if you take sum over Zp, k not equal to 0, and you take the product here of, uh, let's say, j from 1 to n of the Fourier transforms of mu j k to the power 2, and take this whole thing, square root of this whole, whole expression. Then you can see that actually computing the Fourier transform of these individual things, you can still control this uh, distance. So this is also a, uh, also a theorem in the notes that we have, uh, which the proof of this is very, very similar to the proof of the uh, of the upper bound lemma, like um, in in a many ways. So that's the kind of thing uh, what I wanted to maybe mention. And uh, finally, uh, there is there is also the growth of the entropy. So I talked about this Pinsker's inequality in the in one of the videos a long time ago. Uh, uh, for entropy, um, we have that uh, um, mu star n. If you take the entropy of this, remember that there is the Pinsker synagogue that connected to the uniform distribution. So you can actually take that this is at least log p. So this is the entropy of the uniform distribution, lambda t is 1 over p, t in zp. And then you can just subtract, you can actually use, use the inequality. I think you get something like this, that you can take log p uh, plus 1 as the, uh, as the lower bound, and then you get uh, this, uh, this, this kind of term that depends on the k in zp k not equal to zero, and then it, the Fourier transform of k to the power 2n. So this is true for any n in n, and for any mu probability distribution. Uh, zero, one, probability distribution. Uh, uh, this is a corollary of uh, upper bound lemma Lemma and Pinsker's inequality. So basically, this is saying that taking large self convolutions of uh, probability distribution, the entropy could start to grow to the maximum eventually, as long as you have control of the Fourier transform for them. So again, the Fourier transform is really dominating the convergence to the, to the main, main statement. Okay, and now I want to go a little bit into the um, the proof of this, so that will be the topic of the next video. So, in the next video I'll just show the proof how all the theorems go 
come together. So how do we get the use the convolution theorem, how do we use the L1 identity, how do we use the Planchero's theorem and the cauchy schwarz uh, inequality together to get this uh, statement of the upper bound lemma. So the uh, proof of this statement now comes in the in the next, next video, so we will we'll go into this. So that's all for today, thank you.